purpose of Lecture 6-2 is to define Bible stability and causal systems in terms of the convolution integral, determine if a system is Bible stable and or causal, and use the properties of interconnected systems to determine the output. Students should be reading Chapter 5 of the course notes during this lecture. Recall that for a causal system, the system output y of t0 at some arbitrary time t0 can only depend on the system input x of t up till and including time t0. It is possible to use the convolution integral to determine if a system is causal. So the first step is to write the convolution integral. y of t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity h of t minus lambda x of lambda d lambda. So we're going to split this into two integrals to find y of t naught. y of t naught is equal to the integral from negative infinity to t naught h of t naught minus lambda x of lambda d lambda plus the integral from t naught to infinity h of t naught minus lambda x of lambda d lambda. In order for the system to be causal, the second integral must be zero because that depends on future values. So the integral from t naught to infinity, h of t naught minus lambda, x of lambda d lambda must be equal to zero. Assuming that x is not zero, then that, this means that h of t naught minus lambda must equal zero for lambda between t naught and infinity. So assume we let lambda equal t naught plus epsilon, where epsilon is a small positive number. So then we'll have h of t naught minus the quantity t naught plus epsilon equals zero, or h of negative epsilon equals zero. So this yields the following result. For a causal system, h of t must equal zero for t less than zero. Recall that for a Bible stable system, the system output is bounded for every bounded input. It is assumed that all the initial conditions are zero. So once again, let's draw the convolution integral in order to demonstrate this. y of t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, h of lambda, x of t minus lambda, d lambda. But remember, we have a bounded input, so x of t minus lambda must be less than or equal to some integer n. So the absolute value or magnitude of y of t must be equal, less than or equal to n times the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, h of lambda d lambda, and since it's bounded, that must be less than m. So we know the only way for this to happen, since n is a, a number and bounded and m is bounded, that the only way for this system to be Bible stable is that the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, or magnitude of h of lambda d lambda, must be less than infinity. Or for a Bible stable system, the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, h of lambda d lambda must be finite. All right, let's look at some examples. Determine if the following systems are Bible stable and or causal. If the impulse response is delta of t minus 2, we can say that the system is definitely causal because h of t does equal 0 for t less than zero. If h of t is equal to delta of t minus two, we need to find the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, h of lambda d lambda, which is equal to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, delta of lambda minus two d lambda, which equals one. And since that's a finite value, we can also say that this system is Bible stable. What about h of t equals u of t plus one? h of t equals u of t plus 1 is a step function that turns on at negative 1. Since h of t is not equal to 0 for t less than 0, we would say that this system is 
not causal. What about the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, u of lambda plus one, d lambda. We know this is equal to the integral from negative one to infinity, d lambda, which is infinity plus one. So because this is not finite and it grows without bound, we would say that the system is also not Bible stable. Let's look at two more examples. H of t is equal to e to the t u of t. Once again, since it's multiplied by u of t, h of t is equal to zero for t less than zero. So we would say that the system is indeed causal. However, the integral is negative from negative infinity to positive infinity, e to the lambda, u of lambda, d lambda, which is equal to the integral from zero to infinity, e to the lambda, d lambda, is equal to infinity minus one, so it's not finite. So we would once again say that this system is not Bible stable. Let's look at one more. H of t equal e to the negative t over two u of t. Well, once again, h of t is equal to zero for t less than zero. So we would say that this system is causal. And to determine Bible stability, we find the integral from minus infinity to positive infinity, e to the negative lambda over two, u of lambda d lambda, which equals the integral from zero to infinity, e to the negative lambda over two d lambda. And that equals negative two e to the negative lambda over two from zero to infinity, which equals zero plus two, which equals two. So yes, we would say that this system is Bible stable. Now let's discuss convolution of interconnected systems. A block diagram can be used to simulate a differential equation. In lab, we have used this concept to find the output of a differential equation by using MATLAB and Simulink. Let's look at some examples of the convolution of interconnected systems on the following table. The first property is commutative. If we do this with a block diagram, we have an input x of t. Then we have the system represented by the impulse response h of t. And the output is y of t. Based upon the commutative property, we know that y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t, but it's also equal to h of t convolved with x of t. So how could we show the associative property using a block diagram? The input to the system would be x of t, and there will be two cascaded systems. One of them will be g of t, and the second one will be h of t, and y of t will be the output. So y of t is equal to, by using grouping, x of t convolved with g of t convolved with h of t, where you do x and g first, but that's equivalent to x of t convolved with g of t and h of t, where you convolve g and h first. What about the block diagram for the distributive property? If the input is x of t, that input is split and goes into two different systems, g of t on top and h of t on the bottom. And then you sum those two together to get y of t. So based upon the distributive property, y of t is equal to x of t convolved with g of t plus h of t but it's also equal to x of t convolved with g of t plus x of t convolved with h of t. Now let's look at the standard block diagram for a feedback control system and use the properties of interconnected systems to determine the output y of t of the following input for the following system. The input is x of t, and if we call the error between the output and the input e of t, the first thing we're going to do is to write an equation in terms of y of t. So the first equation is that y of t is equal to e of t, the input into c, convolved with c of t, convolved with g of t. Our second equation is going to be e of t. e of t, the output of the difference, 
is going to be E of T is equal to X of T minus H of T convolved with Y of T. The next step is to substitute equation two into equation one. And we get that Y of T is equal to X of T minus H of T convolved with Y of T. And that entire quantity convolved with C of T and convolved with G of T. Our next step is to get the Y of T on one side and the X of T on the other. So Y of T convolved with, notice we have to put an impulse here because Y of T times and convolved with the impulse will get Y of T back. So this is going to be delta of T plus C of T convolved with G of T convolved with H of T. And that equals on the right side, X of T convolved with C of T convolved with G of T. And that's as far as we can go on the analysis of the system. In a couple of lectures, we will see the benefit of moving to the frequency domain because convolution becomes multiplication in the frequency domain and you can greatly simplify this relationship. Okay, let's try one more example. Use the properties of an interconnected system to determine the output y of t of the following system. We're going to define one variable, w of t, and it's going to be the output of this summer here. And my first equation is going to be y of t is equal to a of t convolved with x of t plus w of t convolved with c of t convolved with d of t. My second equation is just like I did before, is going to be the output of the summer. So w of t is equal to x of t convolved with b of t plus E of T convolved with Y of T. And then we're going to substitute equation two into equation one. And we get that Y of T is equal to A of T convolved with X of T plus in brackets, X of T convolved with B of T plus E of T convolved with Y of T, close brackets, convolved with C of T, convolved with D of T. Moving all the terms with the Y of T to the left side of the equation, we get Y of T convolved with, in brackets, delta of T minus C of T convolved with D of T convolved with E of T. And that equals on the right side all the terms that involve X of T. So we have X of T convolved with, in brackets, A of T plus B of T, B of T convolved with C of T convolved with D of T. Okay, let's try one more example. Use the properties of interconnected systems to de determine the output y of t of the following system. For the first equation, we're going to write e of t. Equation one is e of t is equal to h1 of t convolved with x of t minus h4 of t convolved with y of t. The second equation is going to be for W of T. W of T is equal to X of T convolved with H5 of T plus E of T convolved with H2 of T. The third equation is going to be Y of T. Y of T is equal to H3 of T 
convolved with W of T. When you put equation two into equation three, we get Y of T equals H3 of T convolved with the quantity H5 of T convolved with X of T plus H2 of T convolved with E of T. And finally, we simplify this and call it equation four. Y of T is equal to H3 of T convolved with H5 of T convolved with X of T plus H2 of T convolved with H3 of T convolved with E of T. Next, we put equation one into equation four. Equation one into equation four yields y of t is equal to h3 of t convolved with h5 of t convolved with x of t plus h2 of t convolved with h3 of t convolved with the quantity in brackets h1 of t convolved with x of t plus minus H4 of T convolved with Y of T. Moving all the terms that involve Y of T to the left side of the equation, we have that Y of T plus H of T, H2 of T convolved with H3 of T convolved with H4 of T convolved with Y of T is equal to on the right side h3 of t convolved with h5 of t convolved with x of t plus h1 of t convolved with h2 of t convolved with h3 of t convolved with x of t and we have one final step where we take the y of t and x of t out. And we get y of t convolved with the quantity delta of t plus h2 of t convolved with h3 of t convolved with h4 of t. Close the bracket and that equals x of t convolved with the quantity h3 of t convolved with H5 of T plus H1 of T convolved with H2 of T convolved with H3 of T. And as you can see, this becomes rather cumbersome very quickly, which motivates moving to the frequency domain. This concludes lecture 6-2 on Bible stability, causality, and interconnected systems. Mm -hmm.